I'm Blake Green. I'm the creator of Sinatra. Uh, I started in about two years ago. I work at Heroku. How uh, many of you heard of Heroku? How many of you have used it? Um, so, I saw, again, I, I was supposed to work with this company called Blazeless, and uh, we were doing all this crazy stuff in Second Life, and I really didn't like it, but um, they had this, they, they gave me the standard pitch that this new project they were doing for a company was going to get like five million requests per second, you know, from day one on launch. So we got about 10. But I had, to, I had to prove that my system could take it, and I did not know right DHP. Um, Rails was a little bit bulky. I was uh, hosted on Engine Yard uh, back when they were a slice, and I think I was it. Um, <laughs> and I was working with Ezra, and uh, you know he had showed me Merv, and Merv was like this directory structure, and it still had the MVC and all this stuff. And I was just like, I got like three routes I need to do, man, and I don't really need all this. And so I kind of started writing a little, you know, ERB thing, and then, then it's not just more. Um, hit that. Uh, so. Um, I just kind of, I kind of want to go over like the basics of Sinatra for just a couple minutes, and then I want to get into um, uh, something that I, I think is really cool and it's becoming a very emerging pattern that people are doing, which is including Sinatra in their jets. Uh, but uh, let's 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 get started here. Uh, you can find me uh, on GitHub as Beavis or Any. I've been doing Ruby ever since 2001 for Rails. Um, but what Sinatra does that I, I think is the, uh, describes it best is it tells a story about HTTP. Your, when, you, when you read Sinatra, or when you look at HTTP, the, the most basic request, this is what you have. Right? How many of you know that you can type that in the that for us that you don't have to do? <laughs> um, but if we were to look at that and compare that to what the Sinatra, the exact same thing in Sinatra would look like, the response whoops, looks like that. Looks just like it, right? So it's just the only difference here is that I've actually got a response in here. This is, I'm, 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 I'm describing exactly the response I want for what the HTTP look like. It's very simple, very concise. Um, obviously this route, I'll get into how those name and stuff works in a little bit and how that matches and stuff. Um, but I'm just going to be a little bit done in here, but I want to show off, I mean this is, cla we have classic Sinatra. So in order for me to show you how to do Sinatra in a gen, I'm going to show you classic Sinatra and then I'm going to show you some of the new stuff in the video Sinatra. Um, classic Sinatra. You start off by creating a hello RD. You require Ruby gems, Sinatra, and you do your git slash, and that's your index page. And uh, just run it with plain old Ruby, get started up, hit it in your browser, and it's running. So why use Sinatra? Why, why, why would I even bother with this? I've got Rails, man. Dan was saying, because I get the same stuff about Sinatra. I've got Rails, man. I don't need this. Um, but the thing is, that this is small. It's very, very tiny. The code base for Sinatra is very, very minimal. Um, if you look at base.rb, which is the core of Sinatra, um, it's like, I think when, you, when I ran it through, uh, when I grabbed out all this stuff, it was like less than like 700, 800 lines of code. Um, so it's very, very fast. Right now, it is the only micro framework out there that is the fastest. You can get, I mean, once outside of bare rack, um, or maybe having a couple of if statements in your rack apps, uh, once you need a little more oomph, then when you need Sinatra, Sinatra is the fastest. It's a great rack of Ruby citizen. And what do I mean by that? How many of you actually just use rack? Have used rack, right? Just take rack out. See, this is where, okay, we need to see more hands coming up. Because rack is so important these days web development, for all of you web developers out there, that Rails is now being, you know, a rack that there is, is, is based on rack. Merge has been based on rack. Sinatra has been based on rack. Waves is based on rack. All of these are based on rack. And if you don't have a good understanding of how rack works, you're not going to be able to utilize these tools to the fullest extent. You're not going to be able to just, you know, to, to, you know, how does this work? I mean, understanding Rack is so important these days. So I highly recommend all of you uh, learn how to write a, like a basic Hello World Rack app and understand uh, the Rack tuple, understand uh, the request objects and the response objects, and just how to how to really just work with those things, and then learn about Buildware as well. So um, hopefully next time I ask these questions, we'll see more hands up because uh, understanding that will really, really get a good grasp of how these uh, technologies are these frameworks. Um, but uh, why, again, still, why, why more Sinatra? It has a very strong focus on HTTP. We don't hide it from you at all, right? Um, you, your URLs are there. You do not have a link to. How many of you use link to in Rails? Right. 
right? Like link to, but that's assuming that you're linking to an action view in our model view and controller, or an action controller and action. Sorry, uh, it's it's we don't we, we just write write an you know write an anchor tag. Don't don't worry about these helpers. Uh, HTTP caching helpers are built in. How many of you have done HTTP caching? Not Rails caching. HTTP caching. Right, like the varnish, maybe rat cache, all that stuff. Um, so not just have this in there and for it's cool. Um, but uh, again, if you aren't familiar with that, I highly recommend looking into things like uh, rat cache. I would start with that and then uh, take a look at varnish as well. Content negotiation is built in, but the thing, this is the cool thing about Sinatra, what I mean by it's a great rat citizen, is that we have content negotiation built in, but someone went and wrote this really cool piece of middleware that I could just stick right in front of my Sinatra app. And it will tag on, if, if, if the URI does not have an extension on it, it will tag it on to that path, to the path info. So then now when Scott gets it, it's got, this, it's got a, a, an extension to it. So now I can actually just do my routing based on that extension versus having to actually have content negotiation in Scott. So when people start coming out with little pieces of rack middleware, we strip it out of Scott. We're leaving it in currently because the, it's called rack accept. For those of you who haven't heard of it, it's in the rack contrib. If you go to github.com slash rack slash rack dash contrib, you'll see it in there. Um, it's really cool. It's, uh, it's still a little new, so we're, we're, we're waiting it out. We're going to you know, contribute to it and make sure. But once, we, once rack has a nice piece of middleware, we just strip it out of Sinatra. There's no reason for us to have to maintain that. And uh, that's what we love about rack. We don't hide rack from it as well. Um, whenever you hear about Sinatra talk, you're always going to get a rack along with it. Um, so, no boilerplate. You don't have to have a controller just to get started. You don't have to have a YAML database config. You don't have to have uh, 72 files that Rails generates for you just to get started. Then it's all gone. It's none of that. Dead simple configuration. If you look at how configuration works in Sinatra, I'm going to show you some examples here soon. Um, it's just super, super easy. Um, how many of you, whenever you're writing uh, applications, you have custom configura information, configuration information you need for your app? Right, I should see almost all your examples. Come on, right? Like, how many of you just start? You drop in a, another YAML file and then do the YAML file read parse and, and then get it out of there in a hash. How many? How many of you do that just to get the custom config? Right? You know, it's not just we have such a basic system for configuring configuring Snapper itself that as long as you don't use any of the few keyword uh, um, uh, configuration options, like you can use the same exact mechanism to just keep your own configuration information in there and have it in Ruby instead of having to have YAML. Uh, uh, so there's smart configuration as well, which I'll, you'll, you'll see an example of soon, but uh, if you are daring and want to go through the Sinatra source, so take, a look, take a look at the options for app file and for run to see how those work. Docs. Sinatra over the past eight months has just gotten an enormous amount of contribution to its documentation. If you go to SinatraRD.com and take a look, it's, it's very great. Uh, the guys have been working really, really hard. We have guys who that's just they love writing documentation and just doing an amazing job at that. Um, plus, it's GitHub pages as well. So if you don't like it or you want to contribute to it, simply plug the repo and send us a pull request to build the play. Uh, and again, a large and great community. All right. Also, extending Sinatra is super, super easy. We've got this really cool system in there now for creating, for extending the DSL, and for also extending just helpers in general. Um, we've been adding really cool hooks in there, like uh, around added and all sorts of other cool things, which I'm not going to get into today, but uh, if you want to come to me after this and you've got, you're just curious to know more, I'll be happy to show you. Um, Rack is the only dependency. If you need HAML or ERB or Erubius or whatever, you absolutely can use it. The second you use HAML, the HAML helper inside Sinatra, if you do not have HAML installed, it will IL on you. Um, but we don't require you to have it installed. There is no Sinatra-HAML. That's what I love about it, right? And uh, there is no software dash ERD and all these other crazy gems. Um, this, <laughs> when I was in Ruby Fringe, Jeremy and Ali, he, uh, he, he did this really great presentation on uh, why you should write your own framework before using another one, which I completely agree with. That's why I encourage all of you to start with Rack first and learn that. Um, you, can only get to, you can only move to software when you really have to. Um, but uh, he said, out of, out of all of them, uh, the WTF to log ratio was the lowest on his scale for Sinatra. So I was pretty proud of that. <laughs> um, when to use it? How many of you have fired up Rails and then 
create a controller and then a model and then sat and scratched your head when you did script generate. Why am I going to name this controller? I only have one and I'll just call it name, right? How many of you have done that? Why? She's like, start with that. Why are you creating a controller for something that's just not even really a controller? You don't need NPC at these points. Maybe you only have one model or a few models, no models, right? Start with Sinatra. Maybe I have two or three views, they're Hamel or ERD or whatever I want, build or it's not, I don't know. Start with Sinatra. <laughs> um, pretty much I just made this point, but uh, I usually say, if you look at you Sinatra, I'm like, whenever you're starting any application, but how can you understand RAC? And I want to, I need to preface that. Once you, once you understand RAC and you, you learn how to build a RAC, just a for RAC app, Starting with Sinatra is okay when you know you're going to have more than a couple routes and you need to use the ERB out of the box really fast and you need to point it out. Um, but otherwise, usually you just play rack and do the trick just for like one route or something. Um, need reasonable apps and reasonable resources. Here's the really, really cool thing about the United Series of Sinatra is Sinatra not only can be your top level application, your only application, but it can be one of many Sinatra applications running in the same VM. It can also be middleware. And how many of you know, I think because the, the ratio here is so low, how many of you know what middleware is, or have heard that term at least, rec middleware? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, the rec middleware allows me to take a simple, with a very simple step. Um, I have a class that has to respond to new. New has to take at least one parameter, which is pack, and, and must respond to call, which takes one parameter, and call must respond to the rec top. You go through the rec spec, it's that easy. I know I'm trying to, without a slide, it's kind of hard to imagine your head not looking at it. Um, the cool thing about Sinatra is that it's got something I call forward, which I'm going to get into later in a minute, too. Um, so a lot of people ask me, they're like, well, if I'm starting with Sinatra, and then I know eventually I'm going to need Rails, well, how would I do that? Or is this going to be a big pain in the butt for me to have to do? And the reason now that we have Rails Metal, and, and, and Rails is moving to, uh, you know, to be rack based the um, cool thing now is that you can take Sinatra, and it automatically knows if it's a piece of middleware or if it's the actual target application that the rack set. If it knows it's the, the target application, it will respond with the top level. If it knows that it's a piece of middleware and it can't find it in none of the routes match, it will forward to the next uh, available application. This means you can take Rails and stick it on the business end of Sinatra and then start piecing and pooling those little routes and those little pieces over into your Rails app without having to migrate the entire thing. This is really, really exciting stuff. Um, also, we need speed. Uh, another great thing is, let's say you have a Rails app that's already been written, and now you need a few routes that need to go and they need some caching buffers, and they need some of the nice things about Sinatra, but you don't want them buried inside of Rails, and they Rails, because then you're, you're losing some speed. <coughs> the nice thing now is that I can actually do the reverse of what I just said and create a little piece of middleware at Sinatra, right? It's like three lines of code to do it, and then stick it in front of, stick it in front of Rails and now serve up those requests with a significant speed. Who's using it? At Aroko, we're using it, obviously. Uh, Aroko is one of the biggest funders of Sinatra. Uh, both core, core uh, Sinatra team members, myself and Ryan Tomeko, both work for Aroko. And uh, we get two days a week to just play with Sinatra and have fun and play in the community. So, um, hey, boy, it's awesome. GitHub. Uh, <laughs> um, GitHub yeah. uses it for a lot of their internal stuff. And how many of you know the new download stuff that they've been doing? Um, and then there's like the, it's, it's asynchronous, that's because there's a Sinatra in the background processing it. Uh, GitHub Services was one of the original uh, large scale uh, Sinatra apps to use. So every time you use GitHub Services, which is like the Lighthouse or Twitter or the AA Box or any of that stuff, I mean, so every time, think about how many people, I mean, there's a lot of people use these things. I mean, thousands and thousands of repos are all open to these things. And that's actually being counted in Sinatra. Every time you do, every time someone does a Git push, it's nailing that Sinatra app. <coughs> going out to, to your IRC channels and everything and, and posting all those messages. Uh, Tax. Tax is a fairly new application. We're using it at Heroku, but it's open source. Uh, allows you to stream databases, transfer transparent pipelines, so you can uh, stream databases back and forth uh, via HTTP. It's a really, really cool project. Uh, Heather, I'm going to take a look at it. Uh, integrity. How many of you heard of Integrity, the continuous integration tool? Dude, this was like, I, 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 people told me about it like months after it had already been released. In fact, the GitHub guys were like, oh, it's so sick, man, you gotta check it out. Um, let's see, and there's so many more. Go take a look at uh, SinatraRB.com for those other guys. Alright, so now, so now I want to talk about, uh, now that I've gotten through that, I want to talk about using Sinatra and Jeps. Um, 
How many of you have used like right little tiny micro apps or something just to draw locally on your local host just to like, I don't know, get like some these nice UI or visibility and some maybe system information or GitHub or you know. Um, for instance, things like, let's say I want to build a mini GitHub, right? I, 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 I travel a lot, I'm on planes a lot, I don't really always fly to America, so I don't have uh, wireless access. Um, if I pull up, I have the card, I'm going to get jumped. So, <laughs> um, I want to be able to create my little app. So, but before I go on, I'd like to be able for anybody who ever wants to use it to just simply install a gem and then run the server. Um, Sinatra is really great for this. Uh, maybe like a local plugin for like Wiki, or maybe get memcache utilization graphs. This is a really cool little app I have. I recommend taking a look at it, which is uh, Amnesia by Ben, ben Schwartz. Um, shows like really nice pretty graphs about your Memcache hit this ratio and all that memory utilization. Um, maybe a configurable or reusable GitHub, GitHub book, right? So what we're going to do today is just a few minutes of time. I work for a company in a big cute farm and they've got me firewall from Twitter, right? But they don't want me reading those tweets. I need the company time. But I do have Heroku, and I can deploy that really easy, and they haven't bought Heroku.com, so I can do a little firewall traversal. <laughs> so, this, so this is what it would look like as a classic application. This is probably something that someone would need to actually clone down and then set these configurations. If you look, so if you look, take a look, uh, first off, if you look at set, username and set password, that's what I mean by dead symbol configuration, right? Like that's, that's custom stuff, I'm just setting that. I set it as a clock as well. This means it'll only execute when uh, the value will be returned when I ask for it. It's just kind of like, it's kind of like defining a method, but um, a little bit nicer for configuration purposes because now I don't have to like ask people to create like this template method, right? And then they have to inherit from a class and override it and all of this. It's uh, it's, it's already it's, it's a nice little DSL for this. Um, and then I'm saying uh, I've got my little Twitter gem that I'm using, whatever for whatever one I set use. Uh, I set up a variable, I say get tweets for you, username and password, and then I DRB out know, or handle out to uh, my index view, right? So, in order to get something like this running in a gem, I'm going to have to do two things. It's this simple. I need to require, where it says require Sinatra, I now require Sinatra base. So, when you use Sinatra and you're running it with Ruby, the reason it runs immediately because without having to specify thin or mongo or any of that is because it uses that exit button. How many of you use that at exit things or know what they are? Okay, yeah, okay, cool. It's just like whenever at the very end, right before you exit, execute this prompt, right? Well, it's not to take some advantage of that and it just says right before you exit, run the server. How many of you use test unit? Right, right. So whenever you run it, I mean, you, you run it with just Ruby, but it runs on your test magically somehow. That's because it has an add exit. Um, so when you require Sinatra base, you're no longer requiring the regular, so not all the other, the extra nice stuff that comes with the classic app, which is automatic running for you. Um, all, the deal, all, the, all those methods defined on main will disappear when you require Sinatra base instead of just playing with all Sinatra. Um, because in your gem, you're, you're not going to, you want people requiring your gem, you do not want to have all those extra web DSL methods on there because they may not be using it for the web app or they may be trying to use another library. Um, so then the next thing I need to do is simply this, indent, and I'll wrap it in a class. It's easy, right? So you're not Twitter web, compare it from Sinatra default. So Sinatra default is, 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 a, is a Sinatra application with sensible defaults for you, right? These are, these are, these are sensible defaults for pieces of, um, for uh, web apps. They're not sensible defaults for middleware. So if you need middleware, if you're trying to build middleware, you're actually going to inherit from Sinatra base instead. Because now you have just a clean slate, like you don't have any of these, all of these configured, you know, all these extra things configured for you. So, if we want to run it for the next executable, we want to have like a you know bin not Twitter uh, in our gem, right? So that someone can once they install the gem, just like any prompt, just say not Twitter and have a server running. This is what you would do. You set not Twitter, one set user password, to say like you know the first argument, first and second arguments of, our, of the fail line script, and then we simply say run. And that will run with the defaults on port 5, port 5, 6, 7. It'll automatically detect if you have mongrel or thin involved. It'll take thin over mongrel. Um, uh, you can pass a hash into run to give it separate, uh, to give it extra options if you need be. But the defaults are usually just enough to, uh, to get this running. And the thing is, I want to be able to deploy this to, to passenger, right? And 
In order, in order to do that, I need a config RU. How many of you are familiar with config RUs and passenger and all of that? Right? Okay, so that's that's rad. That's that's bare, 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 bare rad. Um, but you need a config RU if you want all of for passenger and you want to be able so the nice thing about this is that the username and the password are gonna be in my config RU. They're not gonna be, I'm not cloning a repo down from GitHub. Changing, putting in sensitive information, saying set username, my actual username, and my actual password, and then having to put it in a private repo on GitHub. What I can do, and, and then upgrading becomes a huge pain in the butt too, right? It's uh, you've got to do rebasing, you've got to keep it constant with it. It's just easier to just keep up, upgrading your gem and then just have the same configure you all the time. So what we can do is in our gem we can create something called install module. And all that does is copy and configure our unit, the current working directory, and wherever this command is run. And also copies in the gems file for easy deployment to Heroku. Sorry, I have a shameless plus for Heroku, but I gotta do it. Uh, so the .gems file on Heroku, how many of you saw the blog post how that works? Right? You just type in the gems you want, whenever you do it, get push, and it deploys and automatically installs gems for you. And this is nice because now your repos are really, really tiny. It's only the only thing in there for this is a config RU and the .gems file. It'll actually install the uh, it'll install the Twitter gem. So my, my config RU looks much like the uh, the not Twitter executable, right? Except for instead of not Twitter web dot run, I'm saying run not Twitter dot or not Twitter web. This is Rax, this is my way of telling Rack, this is my target application. This is this is the main line. This is what I want to be run. Okay. My dot gems file looks like this. And because I put my uh, my, my gem up on um, on GitHub, it's gonna be the Mr. Rainey, not Twitter, with them and specify the source, which is GitHub. To simply deploy it, I init a repo, I add everything to it, I commit, I already create which automatically adds a Heroku remote for me with the application that was created. Um, I don't specify an application name here because I just like all the really cool, fun names that Heroku generates for me because I can rename them later. And, uh, and then you can get push with the master and then Heroku open. That's it. Now it's deployed and launched. It's in production. It's got varnish. It's got net cache. It's got everything I need. It scales laterally. Um, it's it's So, and I don't have to manage it. Um, so any questions about that? Like that was just one little feature I kind of wanted to show off, but now I'm going to start going on some other things. Any? No? Okay. I, want to, I just want to talk about three of my uh, favorite features of Sinatra, which are starting with pass. Pass is this cool new one they go nine series, right? So let's say I have a route hit. I'm inside the route now, and actually that block has been executed. But at the very first line, I've realized, wait a minute, I, the route hasn't matched. The route is matched, but let's say something like the host name doesn't match. So if you, if you remember this in the very first slide where I did get host name, host name uses pass. It's just an implementation that says pass unless host name equals the host name, right? This is a really nice little call perform. But what that does is it'll pass down the next route. So then the next route will get hit, and it'll ask you to go through the whole little bit of all the motions all over again for that one and continue on down the chain. And there's forward. Forward is when you're a piece of middleware. I can say, forward, I have done my job. I've done as much as I can. Let the next app take over. And then he can pass if he wants to. But I'm forwarding to the next application in the pipeline. And this is where it really gets fun. This is where it gets just totally cool. Because when Sinatra knows that it's a piece of middleware, it automatically will forward for you if none of the pass. But if you need to explicitly forward in a certain event or a certain time, you can do so just by explicitly saying forward. Use. Use is a basic rack command. This is how you install middleware in the middleware pipeline. What use does is use we in, in, because uh, Sinatra does it has a classic style. We, we just re-implemented use inside Sinatra so that you can actually use use and use uh, middleware inside the classic app without um, without having to break out into bare rack. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's yeah it's it's cool. So these are my three favorite features. Um, those of you who want to get into more like resources, uh, take a look at snatchrb.com. Um, I would definitely, again, go to github.com and look at rack slash rack, rack slash rack and trip, learn those, understand them. Uh, and uh, also take a look at our tomatoes rack cache. Um, because of all the nice caching partners that we have in Sinatra and learning HTTP caching, uh, Ryan's rack cache, you can just say, at the very beginning of your app, you say use rack cache, and that's it. Now you have HTTP caching built into the front of your application, right? Uh, without having to install Marsh. The nice thing about this is that it'll also hit, because it is, it's so, it's so bare metal now, that it's just basic rack. 
because rag on my MacBook, barefoot rag app, it's about 4,000 requests per second. Right? It, it, it takes an enormous amount of requests per second. Um, you know, you speak Sinatra in front of it, now it's going to slow down a little bit because it's a little more complicated rally. Um, but the thing about rag, rag cash is still down bare metal is that now it's like, if, if rag cash realizes based on the caching, caching rules, um, you can hit bin cash from file store, you can hit uh, Tokyo Cabin, you can hit, I mean, you can hit whatever you want, right? You can go straight to the file system if you want, and it, it, it's, all, it's, all, uh, it's all very configurable. Um, but it's just a random in memory hash uh, right out of the box. So, I got about 4 minutes and 30 seconds left. Are there any questions? Anybody? You mentioned Rack a lot. I looked around for uh, Rack documentation or, or really introductions to Rack. Do you have any suggestions for where to go and just go from zero to understanding Rack? Well, I mean, one of the ways you can look at how it's optimized. You can look at how it's optimized. Another, the easiest, the easiest place to go to learn that, I mean, is that Rack documentation. I think it's Rack, it's rack RDB 4 org, and then somewhere in the middle of the screen it says, here's some documentation, and then there's other documentation. You want to put off other. <laughs> it's really confusing. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't two years. What? So I, I, I have that. I mean, I was. I, I already got there. Everybody? Cool. That's how easy rack is. It's just that simple. 
I just want to mention there's actually a great series of screencasts that are free. And it goes all the way from the Hello World Rack app all the way to re-implementing Sinatra. Oh, cool. app. It's, on, cool. uh, it's a blog called Remy, R-E-M-I, and then okay. search Remy Rack. Okay, so this is a search Remy Rack. There's a good screencast that yeah, will tell you where uh, <laughs> it'll show all the basics, everything from the basic barefoot app like this to re-implementing Sinatra. Or ask idea. me, because those are mine. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Oh, they're amazing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 that's really good. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> So that, that's one of, one of the other things I love about Snapchat is that not only, not only are we like great next, you know, I like to think we're great next to this, but uh, one of the four team members of the Rock Rack is Brian's makeover. One of the most important members of Snapchat. So we're very active in both communities, so we're, we like to keep up you know, we're close and, and we're all married. Uh, so. Any more questions? <laughs>